Son, she caught him just beating his whole meat. Math Feats, episode 12. I'm going to make a video for each anime this season. Pants down, balls out. Son, she just caught him, like, beating his whole dick, bro. Alright guys, so I just finished watching Araburu Kisatsu no Otome Domo Yo. In English, that is Maidens of the Savage Season, which is an anime adaptation of a manga called O oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, made by Mari Okada. Some of the other stuff Mari Okada has done since she's so popular. Here are some of the stuff she's done. She wrote Anohana, she wrote that manga, she also wrote the manga for Aria, she wrote Fractal, Kiznaiver, and Wixos. And the anime that Mario Kata has written, she's written the anime adaptation for Anohana, for Kiznaiver. She wrote, she scripted Black Rock Shooters anime. She also scripted the original Fate Stay Night anime, Kofuku Graffiti, Kodomo no Jikan, which I'm pretty sure is a hentai. She also scripted Anthem of the Heart, which is a movie that came out in 2015, Makia, when the flower when the promised flower blooms which is an anime that which is a movie that came out in 2018 so last year and last of all she has also scripted this anime movie that has not come out yet and is set to come out in October this year called Sora no Aosa wo Shiru Hito yo in English that is the person who knows how blue the sky is can't wait. And then of course she also wrote, you know, like I said, this show and the manga for it. Okay, so Maidens of the Savage Season. This anime is about a group of girls who are basically in the literature club and they are, the show starts out with them reading an erotic-ish novel. It's just basically, it's mentioning sex and just like talking about it. There's some lines that, that are said like, uh, Thus, I parted her lushness and drank every last drop of the sweet juices pouring forth from her. That's one of the lines that uh, they read from the book that they are reading at the beginning. And uh, basically it embarrasses them all because they're all basically like straight edge girls who live, who, who live in a really perverted world for uh, as much shit that happens to them. Like, everyone else in the world is super, like, uh, open with sexuality and stuff. Kind of how I wish the world was. But these girls are prudes, you know what I'm saying? They're just anti-fuck. So while everybody else is constantly talking about sex, they're trying to, for most of them, for the most part, are trying to avoid sex and, like, try not to think about sex because they don't want to get obsessed with sex like everyone else seems to be. Main character's name is the girl with brown hair and her name is Kazusa. The main guy's name is Izumi. That's all the names I could really catch. But there is another character actually. There's one more character that I know the name of. So there's this girl who's basically like school beauty who's like apparently the hottest or something compared to everyone else uh, in the school. They say at one point that she is they say that she is the crown jewel of the dung heap so that all the so all the other girls are the dung heap and she has also joined the writing club and she's actually quite interested in uh sex because she's thinking about stuff like in the sense of humanity if you take all of the planet's time and put it like on a timeline human life is just like 11 minutes so uh she's basically like oh i'm going to die soon and so i have to have sex and so her name is miss sugiwara they didn't we didn't get a first name so basically in this world everyone is just obsessed with sex you'll see all the time while they're walking or like even at the beginning while they're in class or while they're in club but while they're in their club out the window they hear people talking about sex and shit just like and and uh i think the leader of the club is just like this is so prude oh my god even though they're literally reading uh books that are just our sex anyway so like you know 
Well, one of the characters points that out. The art style of this anime is really good. I like the the OP is okay. You know, um, I think I think the OP has a lot to it. Like, there's a lot of really cool aesthetics that they're going for and different feels that like uh they're communicating with their OP as a there's like all these cool aesthetic shots. Colors are good, dude. Anyway, yeah, this anime looks great. I appreciate the art style. I think it looks great. I don't I haven't read the manga. I want to. I wanted to read it before this came out. Story of my life. How many times have I said that? But it's true. So basically, half of this episode is just all of the girls running away from sex. Then you get into some of the girls' heads and you see like one of the girls who seems to be the most quiet one has like somebody online who she's talking to and uh, asking her to do loot things or asking them to do loot things to her. And uh, because she wants to become a great writer. And so she's because all of the literature that she's reading has sex in it. She she feels like she needs to experience sex to really be a successful writer. And so she is just like asking her friend online or whatever to, you know, to taste her juices, as she says, from the book. And she repeats that to that guy or person on the internet. So the main boy, Izumi, is basically Kazusa's childhood friend. And she and they show us a flashback of like them being really cute as kids and like there's a scene and like, you know, because of their innocence as children, they don't really know what they're doing. But like when they were children and playing in front of their parents because they're neighbors, he put his dick on top of her head and they were like, hey, look, samurai hair, right? Like not even, you know, and then their parents saw and were like, oh shit, fuck, fuck. Pretty good scene. You're watching Matt Feats episode 12. So apparently Izumi's mother is out of town right now because she is doing something that I forgot. And because of that, Kazusa has to go and bring him food. And so the first time she brings him food and he asks her, uh, do you not want me to talk to you in public? Because they've basically grown apart from when they were like in elementary school and younger to like when he got in middle school and started getting real popular. And so, uh, she so and so all the students basically bully her and talk shit about her because of how lucky she is that she lives right next to him and so she feels bad and tries to avoid him so that he doesn't get or so that she doesn't get you know shit on by every girl in the school who's jealous of her for whatever reason or for that reason and so the second time that she goes over nobody's home so she opens the door because she hears music and what you see is exactly what you came here for you hear like this rock music it's really crazy it's like it's it's japanese rock it's definitely j-rock and they're like and and you just hear it getting louder as she's walking into the house louder louder it's like it's like sayori's death from uh doki doki literature club and you just get closer and closer to the door and she opens the door and she just sees him safe search off she sees him masturbating and it's just like fuck <laughs> fuck man and so he just looks at her and then he turns off the music and pulls his pants up and he just he just acts like he acts normal and then he says please don't tell anybody and at that point she basically drops the food that she had brought for him and she starts running and as she's running across the across the city this looks great this is an amazing scene music starts playing again and what you see is her running and everything she looks at is like a sexual innuendo so the first thing she looks at she sees big wang's chinese food and then she sees a picture of a split gourd because at some point earlier they said that uh i mean they made a reference to split gourd being uh sex too or just like you know being another sexual innuendo so she just sees a gourd i guess and uh it's just like oh because she's just running through the town like triggered because she's like oh my god my childhood friend is not like this there's all there was also a scene earlier where there were just like two girls who were basically talking about how much they like izumi and she was basically e-shopping on them and they said hey why don't you just take his virginity and she's like, hey, that's not a bad idea. And that's when Kazusa's like, he wouldn't do that. He's he's not like that guy. He's, he's not like that. But then, you know, she walks in on him masturbating and she's like, fuck, fuck, fuck. He's not supposed to be like this. And then she sees another sign that says dicks, pachinko, and then hot meat buns. And then she's and then she stops at a train or like at a at a bridge above a train. And she says, 
it won't fit. And then you see the train, it goes under into the tunnel. It goes into the tunnel and she says it fit. It actually fit. And that's when she drops to her knees and she says that and she yells out how she doesn't want sex to take over her life. So I'd say this show is not bad. Um, I enjoyed it. The art style has me going through. I'm probably more interested in the manga from the screen caps that I've seen. So I'd probably read some more of the manga. But I mean, this anime adaptation is most certainly competent. And I enjoyed every minute of it just watching them. I'm sure there's going to be way more. I've seen like some spoilers from stuff later on in this series that I'm kind of interested in. But this show, I have high hopes for it. I think it'll be great. Comment what would you do if somebody found you masturbating? The ED of the show is pretty nice. It's really sweet. There's not really much to say about it, but I did enjoy it. The song is good. Math feats forever. Anyway guys, that's all I have to say about Araburu Kisetsu no Otome Domo Yo or Maidens of the Savage Season. Thank you for watching. If you masturbated while watching this video, click like. See you guys next time.